Finding Bigfoot, Everything You Need to Know, by Martha Brockenbro. People say Bigfoot doesn't exist, that Sasquatch is a legend, that we can forget about finding a Yeti. It's a common misperception that all of these animals have been proven to be hoaxes, that Bigfoot was just some guy playing tricks on a Northern California road crew. They don't know about the tracks, about the noises and shining eyes in the woods at night, about the deer carcasses with strangely snapped off bones, that long before the name Bigfoot was applied to describe a creature that left giant tracks in the earth, human beings from around the world have been telling stories about an enormous bipedal ape, a hairy, wild, and stunningly elusive mystery. Misperception A misperception is a misunderstanding. Hoaxes Hoaxes are acts that involve tricking and lying to people. Elusive Something that is elusive is hard to find or understand. The case for cryptids Some people believe we know everything there is to know about this world. People who believe every inch of land has been conquered, every drop of ocean explored. And while it's true that adventurers have made their way around the globe, mapping the edges of oceans and continents, the heights of the mountains, the depths of the rivers and lakes, it's also true that scientists learn new things every day. What's more, we find new animals all the time. Since 2012, for example, we have discovered all sorts of previously unknown creatures, including monkeys, frogs, sharks, and lizards, even primates. Would you believe there is such a thing as a poisonous spider with hook-like claws on each of its legs? A group of people exploring a cave in Bigfoot country, southern Oregon, stumbled across this family of spiders deep in the throat of a cave in 2012. The Troglaraptor marching toni was the first family of native North American spiders to be found in more than a century. That same year, a Louisiana State University snake expert named Christopher Austin followed strange chirping noises while he was inside a Papua New Guinea forest. It turns out a frog the size of a housefly, the world's tiniest vertebrate, was responsible for the singing. The same professor has found several other species that hadn't yet been recognized by science, including other frogs, lizards, and parasites. There was a new primate recognized around the same time, the Lasula monkey, a wise-looking creature with a grayish-brown beard. This one was found in 2007 living as a school administrator's pet in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Researchers studied its DNA to conclude it was an unrecognized species. It's already endangered because it's being hunted for its meat. It's only the second new kind of African monkey to be recognized in 28 years, and it might have died out before scientists learned of its existence. While most of these newly discovered creatures are small or live in remote places, history is full of animals once called legend that turned out to be real. The list of animals known by reputation first and recognized by science later includes gorillas, giant pandas, Komodo dragons, bonobos, megamouth sharks, giant geckos, and the okapi, a short-necked giraffe relative. There's a controversial field of science that specializes in the study of hidden animals. It's called cryptozoology, a word invented in the late 1950s by Bernard Huvelmans, a zoologist. The word itself sounds pretty out there, but its meaning is straightforward. Crypto means hidden, and zoology means the study of animals. It's related to paleontology 
the study of prehistoric life, and both use reconstructions and evidence to build pictures of animals that haven't been seen or are no more. In addition to Bigfoot, another famous cryptid or hidden animal is the Loch Ness Monster. In this image, an illustrator imagines what the Loch Ness Monster might look like based on witness descriptions. Spotted. It was kind of creepy. Howie Dag lives in Heidelberg on Prince of Wales Island in Alaska. He and a neighbor had taken his truck out into the woods for a hike, hoping to relax and unwind after school. At first, they didn't even notice the tracks, but then he got a closer look. I stopped, and one of the tracks had toes, big toes in it, he said. I stopped, and we took some pictures. It was kind of creepy. What's more, he and his friend felt as if they were being watched. Still, he felt skeptical, so he pushed on. Were they really big footprints? He followed the trail all the way up the mountain. At the top, where the road was choked with trees, he noticed a lot of branches had been snapped off about seven feet off the ground, a classic Bigfoot sign. The sun dipped behind the hill, and it started to get dark, and that's when Howie's neighbor got scared, calling the creature a gojit, which is a term used to describe a hairy giant in parts of Prince of Wales. Howie also had the willies, so they left. The photos they took that day show prints 17.3 inches long and about 6.5 inches wide, the sort that might belong to a large Sasquatch. Although black holes are real, they are invisible. In this image, an illustrator imagines what a black hole might look like. Is Bigfoot real? The truth is, no one knows for sure, although many people have strong opinions on the matter. We can only be absolutely certain there is such a creature as Bigfoot when we have found one. Otherwise, Bigfoot remains a theoretical possibility. A theory is an explanation of something based on observations, experiments, and reasoning. When formed with care, theories are scientifically valid, even if they are not proven and even when they apply to things we haven't seen. Take black holes, for example. These are spots in space, big and small, where matter has been compressed. This can happen when a star dies. The compression of matter makes for an incredibly strong gravitational pull, a pull so strong nothing can escape it, not even light. No one has ever seen a black hole. They're invisible. No one has ever been inside one but we can form theories about their existence because of careful, repeatable observations that have been made. As we learn more about physics, we might someday adjust our understanding and definition of black holes. But no one calls scientists crazy for believing such a thing exists, because there is enough evidence to make it a reasonable thing to believe in. Scientists ask questions, make observations, come up with smart guesses, devise experiments to test them, and consider the results thoughtfully. And that's exactly what you can do when it comes to Bigfoot. There's nothing wrong with a healthy dose of skepticism. That's how scientists get smarter. And open minds are the only ones that can learn new things. Theoretical. Something that is theoretical is based on a guess rather than truth. The Arguments for Bigfoot Plenty of smart people believe Bigfoot is alive and well and hiding from humanity. What makes them so sure there's a Bigfoot when others say there's no such creature? It comes down to four things. Folklore One of the oldest surviving works of literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh, describes a hairy wild man named Enkidu. Similar tales of a hairy wild man who lives in the forest are part of many cultures around the world. 
Ancient cave paintings in California depict a hairy man and his family, and stories that go along with them sound very much like Bigfoot tales. If no such animal exists, why would these stories be so common? Eyewitness accounts Thousands of people in the United States have reported seeing Bigfoot. People in Canada have Sasquatch sightings. In Nepal, people claim to have seen Yetis. In Indonesia, a smaller version of a hairy man-like creature that walks on two feet is known as the Orang Pendek. There's also the Australian Yowie. Many people who have had encounters are respected community members, including police officers and judges, who have a lot to lose by lying. If they're not lying, what did they see? Thousands of people in the United States have reported seeing Bigfoot. Encounters Encounters are meetings, especially those that are unplanned. Physical evidence Although no one has found the body of a Bigfoot, people have seen what they consider to be physical evidence. Footprints are among the best-known forms of evidence. The Bigfoot Field Research Organization, BFRO for example, has collected more than 700 suspected Bigfoot prints. Many that come from different areas are strikingly similar in size and overall proportions. Other physical evidence includes hair samples, some of which have not been identified as belonging to other known animals. Does it belong to Bigfoot? We can only know for sure when there is a known specimen of Bigfoot to test against. Bigfooters have also gathered what they believe are blood and stool samples. And finally, there are twisted off branches, animal carcasses with cleanly broken bones, and clumps of sticks arranged into sleeping nests, all of which are considered evidence of the creature's presence in the woods. Photos, videos, and audio recordings. There are photographs, a famous film, thermal video recordings, and audio recordings said to be multiple Bigfoots communicating with one another. When you combine all of this evidence, believers say you have a compelling picture of a large, hairy, bipedal animal that lives in remote forests and swamps. Thermal image of a human hand. Some people believe broken off branches are evidence of a Bigfoot creature. Spotted, a flying piece of wood from out of nowhere. Nina Hury drives a cab in Alaska's Prince of Wales Island making regular trips back and forth during the night. On one of those wee hour trips, she had a passenger with her. Out of nowhere, this piece of wood comes flying at us, she said. It hit the front end of the car and cracked my windshield all the way across. Something big had to have thrown it because the impact shook her entire van. Nina wanted to stop, but her frightened passenger urged her on. She returned to investigate the next day and found the piece of wood. It smelled putrid. She looked up into a nearby tree and saw a pair of big green eyes looking at her from inside a humongous body. There's no way it was a bear, she said. Building a Bigfoot from a track. Zadig's method. In many ways, Bigfoot hunters have to think like detectives taking bits of information they have to make a picture of the animal as a whole. When you go through a process like this with the natural world, you use something called Zadig's method, taking signs that are visible and deducing as much information as possible. Baron George Cuvier, who created the modern field of paleontology, observed that if you saw a cloven hoof print, you could project a lot of information about the animal. For example, it would be a ruminant, meaning it is a mammal that chews plant material, softens it in the first part of its stomach, and then regurgitates it for a bit more chewing. But that's not all. 
This single track therefore tells the observer about the kind of teeth, the kind of jaws, the haunches, the shoulder, and the pelvis of the animal which is passed, he wrote in 1834. This is what Bigfoot believers are trying to do, and many people believe the evidence of Bigfoot that has been gathered to date justifies the continued search. The Arguments Against Bigfoot Bigfoot has an army of doubters. Their best argument is that people have been looking unsuccessfully for Bigfoot for decades, and lately, even using sophisticated equipment, such as cameras that can detect heat. If there really were such a creature, all those dedicated searchers using that great technology would have found proof. That's a hard argument to counter, although diehard squatchers will tell you the evidence they have gathered is proof. But if we define proof of Bigfoot as an actual Bigfoot, dead or alive, preferably alive for the sake of the Bigfoot, then we are about eight hairy feet and 650 pounds shy of certainty. Likewise, a DNA sequence confirmed by independent laboratories would also work as proof. Unless scientific standards relax, which isn't likely, you'd certainly need a holotype, a physical example of a Bigfoot, a Bigfoot body part, or DNA for an official species to be named. In many ways, Bigfoot hunters have to think like detectives. Bringing Science to the Search For Bigfoot to become an official species, we need concrete evidence that can be examined systematically and thoroughly. We also need a theory that explains why, despite a lot of searching, no one has ever found Bigfoot, a skeleton, or even a few remaining bones that once belonged to the creature. Bigfoot researcher Cliff Barackman has advice for Bigfooters about how to take a scientific approach to the search. Follow the scientific method. Here's how that model of thinking works. 1. Ask a question. 2. Research. Look for evidence and other clues that could point to an answer. 3. Take a guess at an answer. This guess is called a hypothesis. 4. Create an experiment to see if your hypothesis could be right. 5. Execute the experiment. Were you right? Repeat the experiment to verify. If you're not, start again at step 2. 6. Write about your experiment and results and share them with other researchers to see if they find the same thing. The goal of these observations, or any scientific observations really, is to establish a set of reliable facts. Using those, we can then conduct further research. It's sort of like building with toy blocks. You start with a foundation and keep adding to that, replacing blocks or theories that have been disproved with additional observations and experiments. Many people in traditional science are so skeptical of Bigfoot they don't even bother to consider new evidence. But this doesn't mean scientists are jerks. Science can be a Bigfooter's best friend. Many kinds of science can potentially come into play. Paleontology, the study of prehistoric life. Anthropology, the study of human behavior and cultures. Kinesiology, the study of human movement. Primatology, the study of primates. And of course, genetics and wildlife biology. Generally speaking, the more you know about science, the more opportunities and insight you will have in life. When it comes to Bigfoot specifically, the more you know about what sort of animal Bigfoot might be, the more you know about how and where a Bigfoot might live. That insight gives you a better chance at encountering a Bigfoot at last.